Okay, let's look at what's involved with integrating WaveJammer into an average vehicle's audio system. So, the components we need. First off, we need the WaveJammer in the included patch cable, any USB-based automotive charger, and then just a typical USB to 30 pin charge sync cable. We purposely selected this vehicle because of sort of the awkward layout of things. Um, this is our aux in port, and it's a long way to the cigarette lighter or auxiliary power port, but we can still do a really good job with this. So with our included patch cable, we're gonna use the 90 degree end into the audio in port. Next, we connect the other end to the line out on the wave jammer. And then we want to, you know, kind of route this cable neatly. And we've got a cubby down here, but of course we could tuck wave jammer into any space that's convenient. But we're going to use this cubby because it's here and it's and it's easy. On the other end, we're going to power wave jammer with our typical USB to 30 pin cable. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tuck the wave jammer and this cable into the cubby. And it'd be really nice if I could mount it against the side. It doesn't take up much of my cubby space and it would allow this cable to make a nice sort of clean run down the dash. And the easiest way to do that is to just use a piece of tape. Now you can use you know, some foam tape or something better, but for the purposes of this demo, we'll just use a loop of typical clear packing tape. Get that cable routed nice and tight. Stick the wave jammer to the side of the cubby. Then all we need to do is connect our USB charger to our power port and plug the other end of the charge cable into that and route the cable neatly. Okay, we've got everything wired up, so now we're gonna go ahead and demonstrate how we connect our device, in this case, a smartphone, to our newly wireless car audio system. So, um, we're demonstrating on Apple iOS 7 in this case, pretty similar for just about every device you encounter. So, we're gonna go into our settings area, and Bluetooth, if Bluetooth is off, turn it on. And I've already got a couple instances of wave jammer in here that uh, that I paired to previously and now the wave jammer that we just installed shows up last in the list. Notice it says not paired. We're going to go ahead and touch it and that's all we need to do to pair. Takes just a couple of seconds and we will be connected and then just you know bring up your audio app of choice and we're going to go ahead back and just uh, pick some song that will be appropriate and press play. And now in a car with a setup like this, probably best just to run your volume all the way up on your smartphone or whatever you're connecting. And then just simply use your volume control on your head unit to control the volume. So, and you won't have any distortion running the volume all the way up on the, on the host device and WaveJammer is not going to distort the signal at all. So we've moved over to another vehicle and I just want to point out the Bluetooth icon in the menu bar. Right now it's grayed out because we're not connected to a WaveJammer, but this vehicle has uh, a WaveJammer installed in it. So I'm going to go ahead and start it up and we'll see just how quickly system connects you see it's blinking and boom we're connected so we start our audio and we're good to go again so this was just to demonstrate that multiple wave jammers uh, installed in multiple vehicles or places when you get within range, your device will just automatically reconnect to them. So, what if your vehicle doesn't have an auxiliary import? There's a company called iSimple, which makes a range of modules that make it 
very easy actually to add an aux import to your existing audio system. Um, what these typically do is they sort of splice in between the cable that connects to the back of your audio system. So it's simply a matter of pulling the cable out of the back, installing their cable, and plugging your cable into their module. Um, if you're, you know, reasonably handy uh, with tools, it's a 20 to 30 minute job. If you're not, visit your local audio shop. I think Best Buy can do those installations as well. Very simple to do. And we'll actually take a look at a vehicle that has one installed and show you just how easy that is. This vehicle was built before 2006. It's a, a GM class two vehicle. And this is sort of what the wiring harness looks like from the iSimple device. So simply have it connected to the wave jammer via this 30 pin port that's part of the kit. Kit also has the 3.5 millimeter line in, which attaches to the line out port on the wave jammer. And I'm able to sort of stuff all this behind the passenger side footrest. So it's a neat installation. You never see it. And of course it's It just works. And we'll adjust our volume from our head unit. Remember, we keep the volume on our device all the way up and do all the volume adjustment from the head unit. And that is using WaveJammer in a vehicle without an aux in for it.